Welcome to the Visionary Chronicles, a business strategy podcast where we provide insight to those looking for creative, executable strategies built around the latest disruptive ideas, innovative cultures, product creators, and marketing solutions. Welcome to the Visionary Chronicles. We're going to talk today about a, another subject I get a lot of questions on from the entrepreneurs that I work with, in particular leaders of brands and companies that are going through these trying times that we're in right now with the COVID-19. It's been a very trying year for 2020 and now going into 2021, but we see a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, but nonetheless, a lot of the leaders and companies, brands, both big and small that I talk with and work with, are concerned about the future. And having gone through this uh, virus and, and going through the trials over the past year, want to know, hey, what does it take as I move forward to not get blindsided by what happened with the virus and having to adapt and change and maneuver around how we normally do business and yet stay profitable. And probably even more importantly, how do you keep a brave face in the time of trials? And so when I looked at this, I said, really what you're looking at is courage. And when I talked to leaders of companies and brands, uh, courage, you know, really how to overcome barriers. That's what we'll talk about today. And how do you overcome these barriers and and how do you work through them and how do you prepare yourself for the future where you're going to come across another pandemic? Um, It may be something completely different depending on where you are with your company. It may be a money issue. It may be a, a personnel issue. It may be a natural disaster. Whatever it is, you're always going to need to have a plan for courage and how to overcome these barriers as they come along and how to adapt and Make sure that you're leading your company through these trying times and overcoming these barriers. And one story that I always like to put out there, it's probably one of the most famous stories ever told and and as a anchor, foundational anchor to the Bible. And that is David versus Goliath. And, you know, why do I bring this up? Well, a couple things with this is that you're overcoming fear and you're overcoming and conquering barriers to success. And one thing that happened in this instance was it wasn't the size of your opponent, but rather how you plan your attack that matters and how confident you are in the future. And certainly within the Bible, David versus Goliath, it was a situation where you had an overconfident giant that saw David as a small opponent. But at the same time, David strategically found a way to overcome his fear. Others had tried and he didn't need the armor. He went out there with a few rocks and was able to take out this Goliath. And really a great story for those that are running companies. You know, how do I overcome this Goliath in the industry? How do I overcome this Goliath barrier that's in front of me and conquer it? And so what I look at when I talk with companies is either you're flat-footed or you're fast. And one thing that I found going through this virus was a lot of companies that were flat-footed. What I mean by that is that they're not adapting. They put your head in the sand and they come out hoping things had changed and don't want to change or are uncomfortable with changing how they've always done their business, even though they knew that they had to change. And they didn't see a clear future. When I, what I always talk about is when you don't see a clear future, you don't have a plan. So making sure that you understand when you're coming up against these Goliaths, have a strategic plan around how you're going to conquer this barrier. And being able to define something you put in place that anticipates this happening again. So you're not caught flat-footed. You can make a move. You can adapt. You can show confidence in your face to the people that are with your company that you're going to overcome and you're going to conquer. So what I'm talking about today are these really these barriers to success. Now, there's many of them, many barriers to success, and I'm sure you've heard of a lot of them. But what I find more often than not, there are really five barriers that leaders of companies, those inside of companies come across. And it it could be 
any one of these barriers we're talking about, money, personnel, finances, anything you talk about from a barrier perspective is going to come across with these five points. And that's why I picked them for us to talk about. And the first one is really a interesting one. It kind of relates to all five in one way or the other, but I found the first and foremost that most people are just afraid, fear. And uh, I always like to use an acronym with fear as well, which kind of breaks it down into a more simplistic way of looking at it is that false stands for false evidence appearing real. And I find that most people, and when you finally get down to the crux of, hey, why are you afraid? What is the issue? And you pen it out. You don't mull it over, over and over again. You pen it out and try to overcome why you're fearful and defining why you're fearful is really an important point. So there's really three areas where fear is a large part of why they have significant barriers in front of them. And the first is really not knowing the outcome. You know, when you're in a situation where you have a barrier in front of you that you haven't seen before, you really don't know the outcome. And as a result of that, knowing not knowing what the future looks like and making a change differently than what you've been doing in the past causes fear. So not knowing the outcome is really a significant barrier for those that don't know how to overcome it. It involves changing what has worked before. And this is something that's really uncomfortable for people. And hey, why do I want to change when this has always worked in the past? Well, I give you a great example of why you need to change in the face of fear is by not knowing the outcome, you don't know what the future looks like. So as a result of that, you need to anticipate what the future is going to be. And then if it's going to change, how are you going to adapt? So you need to change how you've worked before. You have efficient systems. You have a great team behind you. You need to be a leader in defining what the future vision of your company looks like. Now, this may be a temporary situation, but I can tell you going through the virus over the last year, and I've mentioned this before, is that I've found many companies that have taken advantage of the situation, not from a standpoint of taking advantage of others, but taking advantage of an opportunity that they saw to adapt and to increase their business across new channels and to service their customer better to be able to build additional brand equity that's within their control. So really a lot of these things were positives coming out of this and they were kind of latent things that they never really wanted to change until forced to. So you're in a situation with barriers where sometimes it forces you to make a change that you needed to make a long time ago. So not knowing the outcome is not such a bad thing. You need to have a plan certainly if you're going to implement change but fear is really one of these things where it rolls around in your head and until you put it down on paper and put a vision of where you're going and why you're going there and how you're going to get there, you're always going to be uncomfortable with change. So making a change that's a positive in a vision that you've defined how it's going to improve your company long term is a significant advantage for you. So you need to change what has worked as a result of fear because the world doesn't stop spinning. You need to make sure that you're making these changes and you're planning to ensure that you're ready and you can adapt when these barriers come up. And the final point on fear that I say these three with not knowing the outcome, fearing you have to change what has worked in the past, the third piece is being proactive versus reactive. This is probably the biggest thing that I see with companies is that the reactive nature of company never ceases to amaze me. Those that are successful, and I'll use Apple as an example again, is that they migrate out of product on the supply chain that is at its peak of popularity many times in order to increase demand for the new products that are coming through the pipeline. So they're really being proactive, not reactive to the market. Many brands and many companies, when they're reactive, it's too late. So being a leader in the industry means that you're proactive. Being a follower is reactive. 
Same thing with fear, adapting, changing, whatever it may be. You need to be very proactive in everything that you're doing and then, and then changing as a result of that. So not knowing the outcome, changing what has worked, being proactive versus reactive. These are all things that are part of fear, but can be overcome with a vision that's set by the leader of the company and the brand. And the other piece you're looking at is why change before it's too late kind of follows that changing what has worked. Why do I want to change? You have to adapt in order to be successful in the future. So set the path forward, move along that path and be a leader and be committed to that vision. The second point I find is a barrier to success is risk. Now you'll say, well, what's the difference between fear and risk? Well, they are different. They're complementary to one another and they're compounding, unfortunately. And people that don't embrace risk are adverse to failure. And the oxymoron with this is that I've never seen a company create a great product without overcoming their fear of failure, their aversion to failure. Those that embrace failure, that embrace risk, are the ones that are the leaders in each industry that they are in, product category, service, whatever it may be. Fail again, fail fast, fail often, brings you closer to successfully commercializing your product that nobody else has in the industry. So many times they're adverse to failure when you get into this barrier of risk, this fear of failure. So that's where these two mesh and this fear plus risk having to overcome these barriers are the two biggest barriers I find with companies to successfully building their company long-term. So again, embrace risk, be vocal about embracing your risk and manage expectations and define goals. It's one thing to fail, but it's another thing not to make progress towards succeeding. So always want to make sure that if you take a step back, take two steps forward. Risk is all part of the process of succeeding and you will fail along the way, but avoiding risk and thinking that you're going to be a leader in your industry or category is a pipe dream. It never happens. So make sure that you embrace risk. You overcome fear. And as a result of that, the vision set for your company brand and as a leader, and you convey to your team, those inside and outside the company and the community that embraces your brand is that you are a leader. The third thing that I see with a barrier to success is short-term thinking versus long-term thinking. You know, understand the consequences of what you face in light of this barrier, this let's say temporary barrier that's in front of you and you sell out your soul for the short term versus the long term. The brands that I've seen that have succeeded are the ones that embrace a long-term strategy through a short-term barrier. Again, I'll say those companies that I've seen are successful that have a long-term strategy to overcome a short-term barrier. So understand the consequences you face if you don't make that long-term strategy and stick to that. And in order for you to stick to that, you need to adapt and lead in the short term to overcome that barrier, to see the light at the end of the tunnel that we're in right now for long-term success. So never sell out to a short-term pain because the long-term gain will be sacrificed. So short-term versus long-term thinking. The fourth is mission. And what I mean by mission is that when you get into a situation where you're in this short-term barrier of defining who you are as a company and selling out as a result, let's say, not understanding clearly what your defined mission is as a company. And, and, And believe it or not, there's a lot of brands that are like this. They maybe have a one hit wonder. They're doing extremely well. They have a product that's in demand by the consumer. But as a result, they never really looked back and said, who are we? What are we doing? 
So as people come on board with your brand or your company, they understand that when things go off track, you can put them back on track if you have a clearly defined mission. So you need to communicate this to your team, to everybody on a daily basis inside of that company. So not communicating your mission or even worse, not having a defined mission of what you stand for is what creates confusion, frustration, and lost loyalty with your consumer. So that's the fourth point I'll say when you get into this barrier and barriers to success, you may think because you're growing, and I've seen brands where they grow extremely fast, one brand in particular that grew from zero to $40 million over a two year period, really just slammed into this one hit wonder funnel But never really when times got tough and competition came in and grabbed their market share in the category business, they had never defined who they were as a company and as a brand. So as a result, those inside the company didn't really know what they stood for. So having a clear mission before things go south or before these short-term barriers come up in front of you need to be defined. And the fifth is competition. And I go back to the David and Goliath story is overemphasizing the power of your competition, paralyzed by what your competition is doing and not finding a strategic way to take them down and bring them down to their knees. Just because they're big and powerful does not mean there isn't a weak point. So finding ways to conquer that behemoth find their weak points exploit them until they fall down to their knees i would rather have a fast quick moving brand that knows how to strategically take down their competition regardless of their size so this is really an important point because competition many times you look well how could we take down this billion dollar behemoth Remember, David versus Goliath, fast-moving versus flat-footed. That's the big difference when you look at your competition, and you need to keep that in mind. Find their weak points and exploit those weak points. I've seen so many young brands that are successful in categories where people never thought they would be able to gain any business whatsoever, and footwear is a great example. Nike and Adidas are the big behemoths within the footwear market, but you've seen many brands like Brooks, Saucony, Allbirds. They each have found their own niche within a category that nobody thought they would be able to gain any share over the big behemoths in the market, but they found their niche, they found their opportunity, and they found a weak point. Many brands are very happy living off $50, $100 million business. And these are things that you can find if you understand Don't get mesmerized by your competition. Find ways to take them down or find ways to define your niche within a category where there is significant business and they're not serving their customer properly or they're not providing a product to the performance level that you would expect as an authentic, let's say, marathoner or runner, whatever it happens to be, find your niche and your opportunity. So again, this courage how to overcome these barriers from businesses, whether it be a natural disaster, a virus, financial hardship, whatever it happens to be, they're all the same, these barriers. But I found these five to be probably the most predominant barriers to success with companies and leaders of companies that I've seen. So fear, risk, short-term thinking versus long-term thinking, your mission and the competition. So overcoming and conquering your barriers to success, it's not easy, but you must commit in order to establish a leadership position, both personally and professionally. It's authentic. You need to be authentic. You need to have a vision. You need to be able to adapt, learn, move on, build a long-term strategy for how you're going to be successful. And I'll leave you with a couple quotes here, which I thought were very interesting for for barriers to success. And they come from Alexander the Great. And he once said, I'm not afraid 
of an army of lions led by a sheep. I'm afraid of an army of sheep led by a lion. And he said also, There's, there is nothing impossible to him who will try. So this paralyzing effect that many brands, companies, and leaders have of fear, risk, short-term versus long-term thinking, each one of these barriers needs to be overcome. And once you overcome these barriers, you'll be better prepared for being able to adapt when these barriers come up and being able to lead your team out of this short-term barrier to long-term success. would like to thank you for listening to the Visionary Chronicles today. I really appreciate your time. And hopefully you've enjoyed the subjects that we talk about each week here on the Visionary Chronicles. And we feel it's very important. We understand that there's professional needs and support you need with your companies and with your brands. But we also appreciate the fact that you've got some personal needs. As leaders of companies and brands, there are many things that you have to deal with. And we want to make sure that we're addressing those as well. If you like what you hear, we would really appreciate subscribing to the Visionary Chronicles. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, and Podbean. So we would really appreciate if you'd subscribe and and look forward to bringing additional episodes to you each week. So again, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Look forward to the next podcast.